next Sunday huh. is Pentecost, the famous, uh, the feast that celebrates the famous story when the Holy Spirit came to the disciple after Jesus' ascension. In mainline Protestant churches, um, like the United Church of Canada, for example, the only the Holy Spirit does not plays uh, does not play an important role. Um, it, it's still part of the Trinity. Don't get me wrong, um, but it's not, let's say, the flavor of the month. Well, to be honest, it's not the flavor of the year at all. Um, because maybe because we don't know exactly um, what to do with this person of the Trinity, uh, we find easier to relate to the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe, maybe, or Jesus, uh, the Messiah, the Prophet, the friend of the poor. Um, when it comes to the Holy Spirit. We're not sure what does the Holy Spirit actually do in the Bible besides Pentecost. To the point that I remember uh, in theological college, I had the full class on the Holy Spirit. And uh, when I was talking about that, there, there was a, a minister who heard me and came to me and said, you have a full class on Holy Spirit, like full 40 five hours on this subject and and she had this vis this you know she was surprised and puzzled at the same time so we struggle to understand the holy spirit maybe because we have hard time to define it and maybe this is the most interesting part of this whole equation because from what we can understand uh, in the scripture in our faith holy spirit cannot be tamed cannot be controlled cannot be boxed we are told that the spirit goes wherever it wants whenever and shows up whenever it wants we cannot <laughs> I don't know about you, but I cannot plan that. Okay, Friday afternoon next week between 2 and 3.30, the Holy Spirit come to me and, and does what the Holy Spirit does. No, it does not work that way. The Holy Spirit sometimes come as a hunch, an inspiration. It comes when we discover new insights new ways to be God's people. It comes under the form of an unexpected force, this courage to do something that we believe we could never do. Well, it's like for the disciple. On the Pentecost story, after Jesus' departure, disciples were in the same room, and they were not necessarily looking to go into the world because... They were living in Roman Empire, and Roman Empire had a very interesting way to get rid of troublemaker. When there was a group, they will take the first, the leader of the group, no trial, no, no red tape. You would execute that person. And if the group does not understand the message, well, you take the second one, and then the third one, and then the fourth one until the group get the message or you ran out of people to kill. That was the Roman Empire way. So, for the point of view of disciple, Jesus has already been executed. They were the second in line. So, of course they were afraid. Of course they want to stay in. But one day something happened. And they struggled to explain what it was exactly, but against all logic, against all common sense, they left their hiding place. And that's the story of Pentecost in the past. But I'm sure we all have in our lives those moments when we did something unexpected. 
something bold, something that asked a lot of courage, something that was completely surprising from around for people around us. And for those of us who believe in God, we believe that's the Holy Spirit at work, guiding us, inspiring us, moving us outside of our zone of comfort. I hope Pentecost will be a moment like that for you. Not necessarily that it will move you, but maybe you will remember all those moments, spectacular or not. Once again, the Holy Spirit does not care about those things. All those moments we were moved outside your zone of comfort. You were able to do something beyond what you thought you could do. Have a great week. Once again, thank you for watching. I remained the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.